Anyway, that, you, you can't just, you can't get there. You have to work with your sergeants, okay? And don't trust your intuitions. No, don't. They've been, they've been thoroughly damaged by officers. You know, you can undo that before you can trust them. Yeah, there's exceptions, of course. Okay, it is commonly believed that individual tasks can't be done in the midst of collective training. It's kind of true if all your collective training is drills. Where it happens is in rehearsals. So, for example, you've got your platoons or your squads doing night ambushes. Think of the things that have to happen in the course of getting ready for an execution of night ambush. Somebody's doing some land navigation in compass. Right? Somebody's doing the face count. The machine gunners have been put through immediate action drills during rehearsals in case they get a jam after they open fire. The MO or the platoon leader or the squad leader have learned about fire planning. It has heard of fire planning practice. There's just a whole bunch of crap that has gone on. Oh, claymores. Oh, big on the claymores. Um, and all, but all of that has to happen in the context of rehearsals. Okay? If you're not doing training as if you're going to war with troop leading procedures and time for troop leading procedures, oh, of course not. Anybody need any more time at all? Next one, conditioning. It's not intellectual. All right? it's, it's below, generally speaking, below the level of the conscious. Um, you're working on things like confidence, you're developing emotions. Oh, yeah, you are. Good company commander is a manipulative son of a bitch. He is definitely working on our emotions. Oh, right, let me go back a second here. Interestingly, I was talking with David Drake about an hour and a half ago, and he was describing his training. David here? No, he was describing his training in war. He gets to the 11th Armored Cav Regiment, and they made him a loader. I mean, he's an intel guy, but he's got to be on, on an armored vehicle somewhere, so they stuck him where they had a position, I think, and that was loader on 1048. And his training consisted of, this is the breach of the cannon. These are the shells. Take the shells out, and you feed them in with the palm of your hand, because the breach block will slide up, and if you use your fingertips, it will lift them off. I could think of a lot of things in that circumstance if I had to take an MI guy and turn him into a loader on a tank that I'd want him to know. But this is an a first round. This is heat. We don't, we're, we're, we're not carrying any signals, so don't worry about that one. Yeah. But, uh, you know, and, and that's the kind of inadequate training you get when you get too many officers and you let them break your NCO pool. Okay, back to the vision. Well, yeah, that was part of it. Um, and a lot of guys, when you have too many officers, they have a much longer break between combat tours. Um, when you don't have enough NCOs, they don't get much of a break between combat tours. Exactly. A friend of mine, uh, his first was a Vet that had already had the Vietnam advisory tour, and all of his squad leaders were early Vietnam CIA leaders. He goes back a few years later as a company commander. His first sergeant was a interwar guy, no Korea experience, and all of his platoon sergeants were E6s on their second doctors. All of the pre war experience guys either dead or retired. Dead, retired, or said to hell. Or went to OCS. You better watch your army go up to hell. It's easier to do it in the open. Um, yeah, well, actually, that, that's why I did from Ted Fernandez. This kind of thing. Okay, this kind of things you're working on. Um, now, note, I said the body. Who has heard the expression, the Battle of Waterloo was one of the playing fields of people? Really with it? Yeah, you know what? Absolute bullshit. Eaton didn't have playing fields for about another dozen years after that. You know, no time machines. I checked. There were no time machines available at that time. Right? Um, you know what he keeps really about? Pushing yourself. Discipline. It's about mental toughness. It's about developing discipline and mental toughness through self-inflicted pain. About 80%. I mind you. 
Some of us, as we got older, kind of wish we kept it up for other reasons, but it didn't happen, so. Conditioning is hard, you can't measure it. How do you know when your condition is too far? You can get hints, but how do you know? I'll, I'll, I'll give you a, a hint. You kind of want a condition determination. I wrote this up as a column, some of you may have already read it. I indicated it's really from the service. Uh, he was, so he's a homeboy, he's a foster. Guys call him foster right now. I know I don't sound like him, right? Um, and uh, we were doing platoon delivered attacks. You know, we set it up very nicely. We got, first, we'd gone out, actually, the corps commander showed up to inspect training, and then we were going to in trenches, good old section of the Soviet stronghold. You know, we had the anti tank wall and anti tank ditch. We had tactical wire, mines, uh, protected wire, but supplementary to do some other tactical. And, uh, like, we'd done it. First platoon, say, did, dug the left hand section of the trench system. Second platoon dug the right hand section of the trench system. Third platoon dug the communication trench back. Of course, they had to build positions. You had trench box, you know, what? A matted, massed up wad of wire stuffed into a cut off the side of the trench, held in by combo wire. When you're running back at the end, you're pursuing it. Flip off the combo wire, the wire rolls down, and you're getting through it anytime soon. Right? And so, first platoon dug this, but you're going to attack from this side. Second platoon dug this, but you're going to attack from this side. And third platoon, I'll let you know which side you're going to attack. Prepare for either one. Well, so, I want to say it was first, it might have been third. We had a way of doing a, a sort of a bank of drill. I had uh, one of our leaders still. Uh, the poles for camouflage systems were concrete. And they worked pretty good. You take a grenade simulator to, to one of them, and you put them together, and you feed them through the wire, and you set it off, and it works. And we'd have the wire connected with uh, more. Holes. So it, when, when that went off, the controller would pull out a hole and the wire would open up, kind of like a real bang of it. Well, and then we had a smoke screen across it. And, um, well, the wire stuck. And little by little, virtually the entire platoon, everybody except two kids, Searles and Benson, I think it was, um, that were on flank security, ended up in the center, trying to pull this wire apart. The wind changed, the smoke lifted, the machine gun sighted right on them. <laughs> there go the miles, they're all dead. And I was about ready to shut down the thing and send it back and have to do it again. Well, it's really their fault. Bad luck, you know. The wire should have opened. It was a real bad work. It opened. And I wasn't mad at it. But then I saw Searles starting to come in. I said, well, let's watch and see what's happening. Let's just see what happens. But what he did was he got Benson. He and Benson went back to where all of his bodies are, and they started looting them for ammunition and grenade signals. Okay. Now, mind you, this is a PFC and a PD2. Okay. Um, I don't know how they got through the wire because the smoke came back. The wind changed, and the smoke came back, and I never did ask them about it. But my best guess is they went through the concert camp and just took their cuts as a matter of course. They fought their way into the trench system. And the two of them, alone, outnumbered five to one, cleared the goddamn trench system. That's a pretty good indicator that you're, you're conditioning some good things. Okay? Um, all right, now, you got to be careful with conditioning, because if the troops know what you want to look at, they'll show it to you. Yeah. They're not stupid. Yeah, they'll act on something. But they're not stupid. Oh, no. no. Um, and so you, you won't know if you let them know. And that, that, it feels a little dishonest when you like that. No, I'm not going to tell you what I'm looking for. I just want to see it. Yeah. What kind of an asshole are you, sir? I'm not. <laughs> um, when I say you can't overcome the distant past, any clues what I'm talking about there? I covered a little bit later on, but. Oh, there's no okay. There are certain attributes of the soldier that you will not give him. He either comes to the colors with it, or he will never have it. Okay. If anyone's ever been in a, in a course with a substantial number of foreign NCOs or officers, very, you know, some of them are good. They leave the course good, they came to their good. Most of them are shit. They were shit when they got there, and they're shit when they leave, despite their country spending a vast amount of money to come and learn stuff from us. Why? They learned all the wrong things as children. Inshallah. It's uh, exactly what you want. 
Um, and sometimes you condition for the wrong things. Oh boy, the wrong things. What's wrong with Miles? Just Polish soldiers. That's not the problem. Leaves don't stop bullets. Leaves don't stop bullets. That's not the problem. No, 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 no. I'm sure the problem is just. And artifacts do that as well. Oh wait, did you have enough? Okay. Okay. A bullet, a rifle has a say a sight here and a sight there. Can you see that okay? Yes, you can. Not real well, but you know. Yeah, that's better. However, the front sight is lower than the rear sight, and the bullet is actually following a trajectory something like this. By the way, let me interject that the human, the human brain is the finest fire control computer in the known universe. But it's a bitch to program. <laughs> That's roughly how a bullet goes. Miles does that. Yeah. If you shoot enough miles, you are training your troops not to shoot real bullets. You are teaching them not to use windage, not to elevate. I think, actually, that there's a way to have done this, and it, and it could have been done that way, which would have been either a <coughs> uh, coal mine. Coal mine. Hello. Yeah, uh, check the plug. Check the plug. <coughs> Yeah, you were there. And it also activates when you tap the mic. 
Yeah. Well, yeah, that could be. Uh, or or another, another really great trick is you get your rifle and you close in on the machine gun. Yeah, <laughs> right? And it'll shoot every time the machine gun goes off. It's great for that wish. Anyway, you know, I, I'm not a huge fan. It's got its place in time. Yeah. So I guess that's, that's another flaw with the system. And, and with a lot of systems like that, where if the, if the soldiers start learning how to game the system, they're not training anymore, they're just playing. And if you're not. <coughs> getting the vision of you're training for war, so take it seriously and don't try to cheat it to look good. But if you're worried about your OER and you want them to look good, then it's easier to say, yeah, go ahead, so that we'll win, so I'll look good. Yeah, yeah. Can I build this one? We <coughs> got out of Jerry TC in Fort Fulton one time. I was in the second, I was in the second brigade at 101st, 502nd. And we were, we were, yeah, well, he and I were the same battalion a good number of years apart. 30 years so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're down there playing against our old friends from first and the bottom of the night, and we kind of pissed them off on the first night of the war when somebody, who will remain nameless, had gotten too close to one of their company commanders. Uh, uh, Yo, know, can't use blanks too close. Yeah, they got the first night kill of rotation 10 minutes in. Still got the jump points are cut off of too, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> well, look, those red start off for jump points. For the first sergeant said each one was worth, you know, an extra 40 weekends. So when I'm pulling them out of a sleepy bag. Thank you. Anyway, um, that pissed them off. And the 509th at that point, they're used to beating the shit out of everybody who visits their little patch of hell. Um, the rotation got really spiritual. If they were supposed to send a platoon to do an ambush, they got mad and sent a company. If they were supposed, they were supposed to have one company defending the shoe guard cordon outside at the end of the rotation. They put the entire fucking battalion in there, <laughs> and they borrowed a squadron of the Second Light Armored Cav Regiment and had them in there too. <laughs> and you know something? It was the best goddamn simulated gunfight I had in 20 goddamn years. Of my life. It was outstanding. People are getting fist fights, guys are getting duct taped to trees. We <laughs> <laughs> hated those sons of bitches and they hated us right back. It went out skinny, and then a year and a half later we went to the Iraqis and fuck fuck them worms. <laughs> Interesting little side like that, that he put out that he didn't mention. The army is, uh, one of the reasons you put up with misery of training is the army is a lack of aid. Marines are too. Okay. Doesn't matter how miserable it is, it's a fun. <laughs> It's funny from the moment you drag your, your weary ass out of bed at 5 in the morning to sweep the floor and do PT until you lay it back down again at about 11 o'clock. The only time you're not in pain, actually, is when you're asleep or drunk. And, um, but well, it doesn't matter. Despite pain, it's funny all the time. Uh, anyway, okay. What's wrong with NGC? Do you really want to condition your troops? Remember we're talking about conditioning. I'm conscious assumptions are in there. Do you want to condition them that they're going to get their asses handed to them all the time? I don't think it's such a great idea, no. really. I've got some reservations on this. Uh, you know? And then battle drills. They'll tell you that the op for the, the 32nd Guards Motorized Rifle Regiment, and it's an American unit, but they, they represent a. Uh, Anarchy. Yeah, sort of a, a quasi Soviet regiment. Um, they'll tell you that they're using battle drills. Okay? I'll talk a little bit about the Soviet battle drills that I know of, but they're not. Um, but they, they do the same things on the same terrain so often that it's like, okay, here I am. I've done this 50 times before from at this particular spot. Here I go to that tree. And then I stop until this guy passes me on the left. And then I move up to that little bar. Right? You know, they're not, every drill is, isn't a drill. It's been modified and perfect for that, for that particular piece of terrain. But what it does is it convinces people that drills work. They don't. On the other subject of drills, which is also addition. Addition, collective response. I'm not a huge fan. Why? French I need The French had a very um, sort of mechanical, drill oriented doctrine before World War II. The German army studied it, and they came to the conclusion that, yeah, it certainly looks like this is better than our somewhat more chaotic tactic. The Germans, however, rejected it anyway because they figured that yeah, it's bullshit. Right? War isn't like that. It's not measurable like this. Formations don't work like that. Well, okay, who won in 1940 in, in France? French and the Germans. Well, the Germans. Okay. Germans and Israelis, they don't do drills. They don't do battle drills. They do crew drills. There's a difference. Okay, drills are predictable. 
take. Um, eventually, your enemy's going to figure out your drill, and he'll find a perfect response to it at the time that it's worse for you. Because, you know, the enemy gets both. It's very democratic. You don't have time to drill it. You just can't. Okay? And, and if you just drilled the things you have time, if you drilled everything that you had time for, you'd have time for nothing else, and you wouldn't have enough drills either. It also removes leadership, if you're doing things by the road. It, it does. It, 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 it removes leadership in a couple of different ways. <coughs> One of the ways is that it advances people who believe in drills that aren't real good at dealing with chaos. Yep. Okay. Um, something I noticed in my rifle company, it actually took my driver to explain to me what I was seeing, because it had been in the company before I was. When we go out, we're you know, moving around Fort Stewart, having fun, fire, fire. It's just great. Okay. If they ran into some kind of contact, because I had a you know, thing set up, it would be like they'd have to stop, start to do the drill that they were used to, realize it didn't work, instantaneously reprogram themselves to it, and then try to figure out what they should do, which they weren't that good at, because they've been broke so much. And it was my driver who pointed out, well, what happened right there, sir, was we always have an HGM fire program. Okay. Um, but you didn't. This time you had it over there, and you had something else from there, and so they didn't know how to react to it. All they do is go, oh, well, man, I can see that work. Doesn't mean there's no place for it. I'd use these kind of filters before I'd let anything be a drill in my company, or any of that. Can you condition? Yeah, but you, condition you can condition people to do a hell of a lot. You can condition them to fly their airplanes into the ship tanks. You know, if they're Japanese. Um, but you can't condition it, and some things are going to go against your societal more so badly that you can't condition it at all. We're not going to think you can apply their airplanes in the ship Is there time to, time to do it? Well, you know, if there isn't, then don't worry about it. You can't do it as well. <coughs> if there is, you can at least consider it. Do you want to drill every conceivable? Then, yeah, there are people who do want to drill every conceivable action. Yeah, and that's impossible. Right. Well, you know, what they do is they start trimming down the actions. So they only drill what they can drill if they get right else. But, you know, do, do you have to? No. Uh, you don't have to drill everything. You drill the most important things. Um, does it require full strength? In fact, go back to our little overhead thingy, and I'll kill the microphone again, I'm sure. But I will not let it stop. 